Hi, this is Erin from MCP Actions. Today I am going to show you how to use the Finish It action. This action preps your images for posting on the internet, on blogs, Facebook, websites, anywhere else on the internet you might want to post them. Um, it sizes them appropriately, it sharpens them, adds a logo, and then also adds branding options like frames, um, roundits, brandits, build it. So you have lots of options with this action. For a brief overview of what each action group does, we will look over here at the drop down list in the effects palette. You click on the arrow and you can select your various different MCP groups that are associated with this action. We've got MCP brand it, MCP branding iron, build it, frame it, round it, and size it. The frame it action um, obviously adds a frame to your photo. We have frame it thin line and thick line, which are simple keystrokes around the image. Frame it small, medium, large, and oversized have thin strokes and then a border around that um, with the size of the border varying based on the frame. Um, frame it bottom heavy is the same style, but it adds some extra space at the bottom of the image in case you want to add um, text or a logo there. The next set of actions is the branding iron, which allows you to add a logo anywhere you want on your image and size it. The MCP branded group um, help you brand your images, give them a distinctive look. They add a branding bar to the top, bottom, right, left, or top and bottom together. You can add a thin stroke to your image if you'd like. The branded bar can be changed to any color after the action runs. Um, and with these branded bars, you have the option of small, large, or framed bars as well. With the rounded options, you have the choice of rounding the corners of your photo in varying degrees from light to what Jody calls the perfect rounding um, bottom heavy rounding, which again gives you some extra space at the bottom of the image to add text. Um, extra rounding, which is pretty round. Oval rounding, which is almost a perfect oval, and then a perfect circle. The MCP Build It actions um, create color blocks um, around your picture. So you've got two styles, the regular ones, which are basically just rectangular blocks on the left. There are also the rounded color blocks, which round out the edges of the image and then will give you a color block um, on either side or at the bottom. And finally, the MCP size it actions will allow you to, um, to reduce the size of your image on the longest side um, to suit the needs of your website or blog. So you can make it smaller um, down to 850 pixels on the longest side all the way down to 500 pixels on the longest side. So you have lots of options for making images smaller. One thing to keep in mind is that you should not use these actions to make images larger because they will look pixelated if you do try that. Um, these actions also shouldn't be used for images that you're planning on printing. They are designed to optimize appearances on the web rather than printing, and there's a big difference between the two. We're going to start with a quick note on how to access your new actions in Photoshop Elements. Uh, the version of Photoshop Elements that we are looking at currently is Photoshop Elements 8. However, the instructions are similar, if not identical, for Photoshop Elements 5, 6, and 7. Uh, so you should be able to follow along no matter which of those versions you're using. Um, after installation, and we do have detailed PDF files teaching you how to install your actions into each different version of Photoshop Elements, um, after installation, you are going to look for your effects palette, which is usually on the right side of your screen. If you don't see effects over here, you'll go to your window menu and check next to the word effects. You also want to make sure that you are in the full edit version of Photoshop Elements 
if you have this option. I believe that Photoshop Elements 5 does not have the full edit option, um, but 6 and 7 and 8 definitely do. Okay, so once you are in the full edit mode, looking at your effects palette, you want to make sure that this third button called Photo Effects is clicked. Next, you will go over here to your drop down bar and you'll see various groups of actions here. Um, among them should be six new groups from N MCP brand it, branding iron, build it, frame it, round it, and size it. Um, to move around the different groups, you just click on the various menu groups and you can find your new actions. One other thing to keep in mind about these actions is that there is a separate action for horizontally or landscaped oriented images um, and then another one for vertically or portrait oriented images. So for instance, we've got two thin lines right here in the frame it group. Um, and the reason for this um, is that we want the images to be 900 pixels on the longest side. So if you have an image that is a landscape oriented image, this thin line action is going to size it to 900 pixels and put a thin line around it. This action is going to size your portrait oriented image to 900 pixels tall and then put your thin line frame around it. Um, you can tell by looking at the logo here, you'll see that there's a horizontal MCP logo versus a vertical MCP logo. So that's a visual cue. You can also hover your mouse over, over the action itself and you will be able to see that the um, entire action name will appear. Now, if you're looking at your actions and you don't see the names of the action or the beginning of the names, at least under it, you can go up here and you can barely see it, but there are three or four horizontal lines. You click right there and you make sure that you see the word hide names. If I were to click on this, it would say it would hide the names and then give you the option of showing names. Um, we don't want to hide them, we want to see them um, so that we can get additional visual cues about which action we're looking at. Okay, so let's start with our first image in this tutorial and actually get into using the actions. On this action, we're going to start with a simple frame it action and we're going to use frame it medium. Now, as you can see, this is a landscape or horizontally oriented image. That means that the image is wider than it is tall. So that means that I need to use the horizontal um, action that is associated with the medium frame it. So I'm looking at it here. I'm in the frame it section of the effects palette and I'm going to double click on the horizontal medium action. Now Photoshop will go through its stuff and um, throughout this process of running actions in Photoshop, um, you will get messages. All these messages give you the option to continue or to stop. You always want to select continue because if you press stop, see what happens, you go back to the beginning and your action is undone. We don't want that to happen. So every time you see um, a message box in Photoshop Elements, remember to select continue. Okay, so we are going to look at the various parts of our layers palette now. And just like the effects palette, if you don't see a layers palette somewhere on your screen, you would go to window and select layers. And um, we do have our layers palette visible and these are the various parts of it over here in the palette. Um, the first one is the picture layer, which is actually the source of your image, and you will never change that. Um, the next image is, the next layer is your sharpening layer. Um, if you need to adjust the sharpening, you will use the opacity slider up here. Um, you will make it either greater by increasing the opacity or less by decreasing the opacity. The stroke layer is what adds this thin key line, the white key line that's around your image. And the change border color layer is what 
controls the black frame around the image. Um, let's talk about modifying some of these layers. We've already mentioned how to adjust the sharpening. If you want to adjust the border color, you would go and double click here on the box next to the words change border color. Up is going to pop your, your color picker box. You can move this anywhere you need to to get a better view. Um, and there's several ways here that you can change your color. You can, number one, click anywhere in the box to get various colors. If you want to change your color range, you can move the arrows or click over here in the rainbow and then you can click to refine um, within this box. You can also enter the RGB numbers here if you know them. Um, for instance, if we wanted to make this pure black again, we would change these numbers to 000, um, which are the RGB numbers for, for pure black. Um, pure white, by the way, is 255 in each of the three fields. Um, the final way that you would change your color, and this might be useful using this hexadecimal box, is if you are wanting to match the frame of your image to a color that is on your website. Um, you can look up the website color and then type in the number in this box. Okay, so we're gonna keep the color black here. Um, but after you make your changes, you would select OK and close it. Um, now, you can also change the stroke. The way you would do this is you would look for the layer that says stroke or that has an FX, which is the um, indicator of layer styles on the layer. Um, in Photoshop Elements 5, this is actually kind of an asterisk but in the other versions of Photoshop Elements that you would be using this action set with, um, it is an FX. So you're going to double click on that FX. You can see that the stroke box is checked. That means that the stroke is on. However, I can turn it off by checking the box. So I can toggle it on and off this way. If I want to modify it, I can change the size, the size using either the slider or by typing directly into the size box. Um, to change the color, I would double click on this. Now, once you've got your different options here, the way you like them, the stroke, the sharpen, and the changing border colors, um, you might want to add a watermark like many photographers do. Um, you will change action groups here select the branding iron and you'll see that there's just one action in this group and um, this is an important one so we wanted to single it out and um, you'll also see that this action is not different for horizontal or vertically oriented images it's just one image um, so you'll want to make sure that you've got the top layer of your image selected double click on it on the action Press continue, of course, like you always do, and then you're going to navigate to your watermark or logo. Now you can see here that it's very large, um, and the beauty of this action is, it, is that it lets you resize your logo and place it wherever you want it. And one thing you'll want to remember when resizing your logo is that you want to hold down the shift key while you do it so that you can constrain the proportions of the image. Um, so I am going to put my cursor over one of the corner sizing boxes. I'm going to press the shift key and I will get a double edged arrow when I click on this sizing box. Holding the shift key, I am going to size the logo until it's the size that I want. I'll release the shift key and then using the arrow cursor, I am going to click on the logo and drag it to the location that I want. Now it's still bigger than I want, so I'm going to press the shift key again, click on one of the corner size bars and reduce it to a better size, and then move it. And once I'm happy with the size and the location, I will press this green check mark to commit the changes. You can see here that I, now I have a completed um, image sized for the web, sharpened. I have a black border with a white stroke and a logo.
Okay, now, what if you want to use this image um, on the internet with no frames, no strokes, no decoration, you only want it to be sharpened, resized, and you want to apply a logo to it. Let's go in our undo history back to the beginning, get rid of all our changes. Um, I am going to go back to the frame it section, and I'm gonna choose one of the simple actions like thick line, um, horizontal frame. Double click on it, press continue, and I'm just going to turn off the stroke here on the stroke layer by double clicking on the FX, unchecking the stroke, pressing OK. Um, now I have an image that is sized appropriately for the internet. Um, it has no stroke, no frame, no bar, no branded, nothing. Um, so it's sized and sharpened for the internet, and then I can go back to the branding iron action and add a logo if I want to do that. Okay, so that, that will give you a plain watermarked image. Now I wanna take this back to where I had it and talk about saving some. So I'm going to rerun the action, add a quick logo Size it again, remembering to press shift, relocating my watermark, sizing just a bit again, and pressing the arrow button. Um, now to save this in order to post it on the internet, you are going to go to the file menu and press save as. Um, navigate to the area where you would like to save your image and change the format type here to um, JPEG in most cases. Um, you will enter the name of the image and press the Save button. I usually select somewhere between 8 and 10 in the quality because I want it to be very good quality. Um, if you have an image with transparent areas that you would like to preserve, we can talk about that later, um, but just to prep you for it, you would hit Save As and rather than selecting in the format box JPEG, you would select PNG. I'll give you an example of that later. Now, one last thing I wanna show you about this watermark before we go on to the next image. You can change the opacity of it by clicking on the watermark layer and then selecting the opacity slider. This will let you adjust it um, depending on the image and what you want out of the logo and the color of the logo and those variables. You can make it um, look however you want using opacity, either more opaque or more transparent. Okay, now let's move on to the build it action group. I'm going to change my group here in the drop down list to build it. And I am going to select an image that we can use um, for this action. We're going to use this pretty picture that Jody took of a girl on a stairway in a purple dress. Um, now these branded actions are, or build it actions, I'm sorry, are great for kind of filling space around an image and helping to standardize the sizes and appearances of various images on your website. Um, you will end up in the image with a um, build it bar either on the side or the bottom of your image. Um, and this often looks great if you match the color to one of the colors from your image. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. So we are going to use the build it color block left action here. And we're going to use the, the vertical this time because this is a vertically or portrait oriented image. So I'm going to double click on the image and press continue like I always do, never press stop. Um, do not change the color or the name of this color picker layer. Hit OK. And now you can see here that your build it bar has appeared on the left and you can change the color by clicking within the color box here. Um, you can click on the rainbow to get different ranges and then click back in the color box to um, fine tune the color within that range. 
you can see that you can also enter the RGB colors, 000 for black, 255, all the way down for white. And finally, you can use this hexadecimal field um, if you have a specific color from your blog that you want to match. Um, now, the last way that you can change, um, if you want to match a color from within your image, is you probably want to move the box over a bit. Click somewhere within the color, color picker box and then bring your mouse over to your image and you can see that the mouse has changed into an eyedropper. And by moving around to a color that you want to use, you can change the color of your build-up box. Um, so I want it to be a bit darker than that. I think I'll go right there and then I press OK. The action completes running. I press continue again. And now I have my completed build it bar. Um, now, the, the way that you make changes to this image are very similar to um, the last, the frame it image that we did, uh, but I'll go over them again quickly just to refresh your memory. Um, sharpen, you would click on the layer and adjust the opacity here if you want it more or less sharp. And one thing to keep in mind with the sharpening adjustments is that you'll often hear that you need to zoom in to check the sharpening. Um, well, with these actions that you have run in the MCP Finish It action set, you don't need to do that because the actions that you're looking at right now, or the images that you're looking at right now, are the same exact size as they are going to appear on the internet. So you don't need to change the size in order to gauge whether your um, sharpening is appropriate or not. Now, I think this might look better with a stroke on it, so I am going to double click here on the FX and turn on our stroke. It is off by default in this group of actions. Um, so turning the stroke on, you can see creates a default black stroke, which doesn't look great, especially right here on the edges. I think it would be better here if the stroke actually matched the purple. Um, to do that, we have to cancel out of here and we have to get our purple selected over here in our color swatches. To do that, we need to actually select the layer of our build up block, click on the eyedropper to activate it, and then click on the purple. And you can see here that purple is now the active foreground color. Double click to bring up the color picker box, highlight the six digit number, and press Control C to copy it. Press Cancel, and then go back up here to the stroke layer. Double click on FX, turn the stroke on, double click on the color picker box, and then press Control V to paste the purple into this stroke box. Select OK, OK, and now you have a purple stroke. The reason you can't use the color picker from this layer directly onto the image is because there's no purple on this layer here. Okay, so now let's take a look at one of the branded actions. I'm gonna go up here and change my group to MCP branded, and I'm gonna use this picture of a woman holding pink balloons. Um, we are going to run the branded right action. And because this is a vertically or portrait oriented image, I am going to scroll down here in my FX palette, look for branded right. I think in this case, I'd like to use, I think in this case, I want to use the right framed vertical action. I'm going to double click on it to run the action. Press continue to complete the action. And now I want to change the black to a pink color from the balloon. So I am gonna go down here to the change color branding bar layer, double click on it, click in the box, and then pick up my eyedropper and bring it over here to the balloons. I like that deeper color a bit better, so I'm going to select okay. 
now I am going to zoom out just a bit and bring up Kelly Moore's watermark so that we can show you how it looks using this branding bar on the right. Um, I am going to, you can see that with this frame action, um, there is a frame around it that is automatically pink, so we don't have to change the stroke color. However, like all the images, you could add a stroke and change the color and size as we've demonstrated before. Um, so I'm happy with the way the image looks. I'm going to go to the branding iron action. I'm going to double click on it and it's going to prompt me to find the logo. I'm going to select Kelly Moore's logo and you can see that this one is long and skinny. I want it to match the orientation of this bar on the right. So you can see how when I hover my mouse I get a curved double headed arrow. I'm going to click and spin until my lines are perfectly straight, which they almost are. There we go. So now it's perfectly vertical. I'm going to click inside it and move it right here to the top of the image and then press the check mark to commit it. Now I really like this image a lot, the way we have it with the logo on the right side, but I'm going to show you another option for it as well. It's a really fun image to use. I'm going to go back to the beginning in my undo history. I'm going to go to the MCP branded selection and I am going to choose branded bottom framed for a vertical image. Double click to run the action press continue and now I've got this wide bar on the bottom again I am going to change the branding bar color to a pink oops I double click here on the layers palette click in the box click on a balloon to find the color I like um, I'm going to go ahead and copy this color while I'm here just in case I want to adjust the stroke I really kind of like it the way it is but there's the color, and if I did want to make the stroke bigger, for instance, I would turn the stroke on. You can see that a small black line appears. Might make it larger, and then change the color to pink. Oh, that didn't work. I changed the color to green. There we go, pink. Um, so you've got options there, okay and okay. Um, if I decide that I like it thinner, I can always just double click on the FX double click directly on the FX and turn the stroke off. I think for now I like it wider though. Now we've got this box at the bottom that we can use for several different things. Um, first off, it would be a great place to add Callie Moore's logo again. Um, also, you could add a text box here going to make sure that my text color is white and it is. I'm going to draw my text box and type the word carnival. Um, now you know probably that by highlighting I pressed control A to highlight those words. I could go here, I could change the font size, I could double click here to change the color, um, but I'm happy with it the way it is. I could also, um, having selected this arrow, I could move the text around if I wanted to, but I kind of like it like this. Um, so you could add one simple descriptive word or label. You could also add some basic um, journaling here, maybe for a digital scrapbooking or even um, a website where you're sharing family photos with the rest of your family. Um, you could type the details of little Johnny's first trip to the carnival or other family milestones here. And it'd be a very cute and unusual way to share your images. I just remember though that these images are not for printing. So this would only be for sharing images digitally like on Flickr or other photo sharing websites where you might sh share your photos with your family. Okay, next, let's look at some more things we can do with the frame it options. I'm going to look at these beautiful flowers in red vases. I'm going to go to frame it, 
simplest thing we could do is just add a thick stroke for a vertical image. Press continue. Again, I can press the double click on the FX to change the size. It's 18 pixels here. I can make it much bigger or smaller, uh, whatever you think looks best on your particular image. Um, I can also change the color of the stroke by clicking here as we've shown. Okay, so that's the simplest thing to do with this image. Um, let's undo it, go back to the beginning, and let's try a frame it oversize for vertical pictures just to see what that looks like. Okay, I am going to select continue. And you can see from this image that the stroke is black. It's actually white, sorry, but it's blending into the white around the image, so you can't really see it. Um, I'll double click here on the stroke. You can see that it is on, and we've selected white. Now, there are lots of things we can do with this beautiful image. Um, for instance, we could pick up the color of the red, and to do that, we would use our eyedropper and we would click, we have to select one of the picture images, the picture image layer, select the red, double click on that red to get the hexadecimal number, copy it, control C, select OK, and then go back up here to the stroke layer. Double click on the stroke color box and control V to paste our red in there. You can see that that gives us a thin red stroke. We might make it a bit bigger. We can also change the color of the border box here. Let's see what this would look like with perhaps a white. So 255 and all the RGB colors, that gives it a really nice, clean, striking look. Um, another thing we might do is take, take the darker color from part of the blinds here, like maybe right there. Let's double click on that to pick up the hexadecimal code. Control C to copy, and then let's see what our frame looks like with that color. Control V in the field and press OK. I think that's a really nice clean look too and that would look striking on a web page. So with an image like this that's so beautiful, you've got lots of options. Um, let's look at another picture of flowers and explore our rounded action options. Going to open the image, move to the rounded section um, and this is a horizontal image. I'm thinking that we should use the round it perfect horizontal. Press play and let's see what happens. Um, again, press continue to end the action. You can see that this defaults to a white background with a stroke on. Now the stroke is black, the background of the image is black, so it's hard to see, but I could change it to red and there you can see a thin red stroke. I'm going to cancel though um, and keep it the way it is. Now you can do several things with this. If your blog is white, it's going to look as if you just have a rounded black image in it. If your blog is not white, you've got a couple of options. You could either use the color picker layer to change the border around the edge of the image to the same color as your blog, or you could just turn this layer off. Um, this checkerboard will appear, which tells you that you now have a transparency in your image. To maintain that transparency, this is what I referred to earlier um, when I was talking about saving as a PNG. So if you want this image to appear on your blog or website with rounded corners and no square corners in the background, you would go to File, Save As, select PNG, Press save, 
And then when you get this option for interlacing, you're going to select none. And that would save your image with transparency. One thing to keep in mind when saving with these transparencies is that you might want a very thin stroke um, around your image and you can always maintain that. Um, maybe kind of a greenish color to match the green somewhere in the flower. Something like that. Just whatever looks good with your image and your website. Okay, now let's use one of the rounded build it blocks, which we haven't used yet. We're going to use this picture of the tricycle. which is also by Photography by Elma. We are going to run, we are going to run here the rounded build it block left. So let's go to build it, select rounded color block left for a vertical image. Press continue and you will get here a color picker layer. Now, this first color cannot be changed after the fact, so we are going to use our eyedropper and select a red from the tricycle. I want it a bit brighter, maybe like that. Um, select OK. The image will finish and it will make the rounded corners. Press continue. And you can see that we have a red here and a white background here. Now again, you can either turn the white background off and make it transparent. Um, you could change the color. You could add a stroke here by using the stroke layer. Um, we can add one of Elma's um, watermarks here. And let's just go ahead and do that. This is such a cute picture. I'm going to go to brand it. I'm going to go to branding iron, actually, because that's where the watermark is. Double click on branding iron, continue, and press and select photography by Elma's watermark. So there it is. I'm going to move it. I think it needs to be a bit smaller. So I press shift, grab the sizing box. I could have it right here at the bottom, in the middle, in the top, wherever I wanted it. I think for these purposes, I will put it in the bottom of the color block, press the check mark to commit the changes, and then perhaps turn down the opacity. I kind of like the opacity up at full blast, so we'll keep it right there. Okay, so there is another use of the rounded build it block. Okay, and for our last image, we are going to use the rounded circle action, which is a lot of fun. I want to go back to the white flowers that we were using. I'm going to use the undo history to take this picture back to the beginning, and I'm going to zoom out a bit so we can see what we're look, working with. I'm going to go here to the rounded section, and we'll see here the circle, horizontal and vertical. This is the second action that is not different um, for horizontal, horizontal and vertical images. Um, so it doesn't matter the orientation of the image, you use one action. I'm going to double click on the action and press continue here. What's going to happen is that we are going to get a square, um, possibly, hopefully, in the top left corner of your image. Um, it could be anywhere though, it could be any size depending on the resolution and size of your image. Um, if you don't see it, press control and the minus sign to zoom your image out and you'll find it somewhere. So first off we want to size it and it's very important to remember that if you want your final picture to be a perfect circle, this selection box has to be a perfect square. Strange thing, but that's the way it works. So I am going to hover my mouse over the corner sizing box and press shift. Pressing, pressing shift is the most important part of this action. Press shift, click, and drag to get the square to be about the size of the circle that I want the image to end up as. I will then release the shift key, click inside the square, and drag the square to where I want 
the final image to be a circle. Press the check button and the image will complete. Press continue one last time and you can see here that I have a gorgeous circle framed image. Now it's important with this circle image, um, especially not to make your square when you select too small, um, because otherwise you're cropping away good pixels and you need plenty of pixels in here um, to have an image that doesn't look pixelated. So you can see here we've got this beautiful circle. We can turn off the stroke. And we can also um, turn off the color picker layer if we want a transparent circle. Saving this as a PNG would make a beautiful, perfectly circular image to save on your website or blog. That's the final tutorial. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, this is Erin from MCP Actions.